The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, education, and religion. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us is Percy Ellis Sutton, Chair Emeritus of Inner City Broadcasting, what might be called, who might be called the Dean of Harlem Politics. How do you like that, Percy? I'm not sure I like that. You know, <laughs> well, dean, dean of Harlem Politics. I'd rather you have said that I'm the elder statesman <laughs> of Harlem Politics. Okay, we'll say that, but <laughs> statesmanship also has some element of uh, force, and you have a force of personality which allowed you to bring your statesmanship to the fore. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you went to college, didn't you? I sure did. <laughs> you must have gone to some important colleges, but you taught in important colleges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll we'll, stop joking. We're in November at this time. Yes, sir. Um, November's coming up, up to us. The election is coming up. A very, very crucial election this time. Yes, sir. A very crucial national election. The state election. We've talked about the state election with the Senator Keith Wright oh, yeah, on yeah, another good. show. And we had a good insight into that. Now I want to talk to you about the national scene. What are the chances of the Democrats taking over the House of Representatives and the Senate or one or the other? What are the chances? Well, I hope that you might ask that question of me. So I contacted my protege, uh, a young man by the name of Charles Rango. And uh, he's likely to be, as uh, all listeners will know, uh, if he wins, and he will win, mm -hmm. uh, his party will win, the Democratic Party, and he will become uh, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, he believes that they'll take at least 30 new seats mm -hmm. in the House of Representatives. I tell him that you must take 40. Mm -hmm. Uh, to have a flexible margin of well, the, not just because of just the audacity of taking part. Yeah, but you know, one of the things that I've been talking with some folks in the political arena, they're concerned about these voting machines. They're concerned that yes. many people will either be intimidated or make the wrong vote or be guided to make the wrong vote. How serious is that a problem? It's a very serious problem, but I hope that there has been an, a sufficiently strong alert uh, from what has happened in the past, mm -hmm. the tricks that have been pulled by the Republicans who have been in control. Mm -hmm. And I think and hope and pray that we'll not have all of the large problems we had before. Mm -hmm. It is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand the NAACP is mobilizing a group of lawyers to help monitor the various polling sites, but there are literally thousands, tens of thousands of polling sites. How can we really do that, particularly in a state where the Republicans totally control the electoral mechanism? They're not, as an old NAACP -er, I must sadly say to you, there will not be enough NAACP volunteers. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, there are a lot of angry people, mm -hmm. some of whom are Republicans, right. who are now Democrats, mm -hmm. or Republicans who are now independents, or Republicans who are just angry, mm -hmm. who will be working on our side, mm -hmm. uh, remembering what they did before. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about Florida in the 2000 election and Ohio in the 2004 election. You got that right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It's inconceivable that in a great democracy that we would allow people to cheat at the ballot box. How do you think that came about? How did it come about? It came about because we're, we're living in a society that there are a lot of cheats. Mm -hmm. We're living in a society that, uh, unfortunately, there's a philosophy abreast in this society that says, win at any cost. Mm -hmm. And how does the stock market work? Mm -hmm. how do, why does gas go up and, and there are people who are starving? 
because they can't get money to go to work mm -hmm. in their car, can't get the gasoline, pay for the, pay for the gasoline, and nobody does anything about it until election time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why is that? It is because in America, the thing that America brags about, uh, democracy, which is not enjoyed by everyone. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, not enjoyed by the poor and some members of the middle class, and certainly none of the poverty persons enjoying it. We are not able to put the kind of pressure on. But I think, I think that we are going to win, the Democrats, and I'm a Democrat, mm -hmm. but the Democrats are going to win the House by a large margin, and I think they have a chance to win the Senate. But I can't gamble on the issue of the Senate. Mm -hmm. I can just brag about the possibilities. Now, what does winning the House of Representatives mean other than our own personal interest in Congressman Rangel becoming chair of Ways and Means? What other things might change if the House is controlled by the Democrats? I think that for the House to be controlled by the Democrats, there'll be a revisit to a number of things that the Republicans have, have done. I don't think that the new Speaker of the House, who will be this gentle lady, this tough gentle lady from California. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, who will become the Speaker of the Assembly, the Speaker of the House, the first woman ever elected Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. I think she will cause a revisiting on the issue of health care. Mm -hmm where the Republicans set up money-making machines for the pharmaceutical companies. And incidentally, you, many people may have noticed the report in the newspapers in the last couple of days of the awesome sums of money being invested by the pharmaceutical companies mm. in the their electric. pet people that mm -hmm. they think are in jeopardy, mm -hmm. and who indeed are in jeopardy, yeah. uh, to be sure they win, mm -hmm. or to hope for them to win, mm -hmm. to help them to win. That's one of the issues, mm -hmm. the issue of health care. Mm -hmm. Another issue would be education, mm -hmm. college education, mm -hmm. preschool education. These are issues I'm sure she will cause mm -hmm the House of Representatives to revisit. And once the House revisits a number of these issues, they will not be revisiting in, with venom. They'll be revisiting it so that people will feel in this country that fairness is being done. That's an interesting point, because the other day, Paul Krugman wrote an op-ed piece in the New York Times, New York Times yes. saying the Democrats need to be more aggressive in criticizing the Republicans, mm -hmm. and the letters to the editor said, this brings back government by conflict. Wouldn't it be better if they do it by negotiation and compromise? And many of the liberal Democrats are saying that too many Democrats are compromising. How do you feel about that? I read Paul Krugman, I like him, mm -hmm. and I read his article, it's a column, and my own attitude is, that you need to be aggressive, but you can't be venomous. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Uh, be, well, aggressive is a bit of kindness now and then, mm -hmm. and, a bit, and being able to get the other side to be with you. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. huh? uh, venomous is when you do what the Republicans yeah. did. Take no prisoners. Take no prisoners. And mm -hmm. that's not the way. Mm -hmm for the Democrats to act, it appears to me. Well, philosophically, yes. going back to the founding of the nation, yes. uh, democracy was really seen as a privilege of white men. Yes. They were, women didn't have the vote, right to vote. Slaves weren't even citizens. They couldn't vote. Uh, they were, the uh, uh, president was elected by the United States Senate. Uh, do you think the Founding Fathers 
really wanted democracy to work, or you think they had a very constrained view of democracy, a sort of a platonic view of democracy? What, what do you think about that? I, I like your use of the term platonic in relation to this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the founding fathers were really talking to themselves. Mm -hmm. They were talking to themselves about an ideal society. Mm -hmm. That they would control. That they would control, <laughs> yes. Uh, because how could you be saying all of these things mm -hmm. and there were people who were slaves mm -hmm. and you were doing nothing for them? Well, that was one of the crucial issues as the Constitution was written. Benjamin uh, Thomas Jefferson wanted them to ban slavery. And the compromise was that they banned it after 1808. But the fact is there were all these millions of people already enslaved, but they didn't do anything to make them citizens. And all they did in the Constitution was count them as three-fifths of the population for apportionment of the House of Representatives, yet they couldn't vote. And, and it took, they, took us until uh, 1964 in the voting rank and 65 to, to change that. So that raised the question about the commitment of uh, the general population of the United States to democracy. And speaking of the year 1808, banning it until then, it, the ban continued mm -hmm. until this century. Mm -hmm. that, that's exactly right. Which raises the question, we talked about power and, and struggle, it raised the question that you do have the, the right to vote now. Yes. Um, fewer than half of African Americans vote, even those who are qualified. Why is that? As someone as I am, who has gone onto the street and gotten angry and come almost to tears, begging people to come out to vote, and even hearing people call from, from a 20th story apartment in one of our giant buildings in Harlem and saying, ain't no good to vote. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do nothing for you. Mm -hmm. And they're living in housing mm -hmm. that was gotten mm -hmm. as a result of people voting, mm -hmm. other people voting, mm -hmm. but there's a hopelessness, mm -hmm. uh, a despair a belief that nothing's going to change, and an absence of appreciation for that which is changing, little by little. But people will not accept the little by little, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. And we have to do more, many of us who are, who've had our opportunities, taken advantage of our opportunities. Each time I speak for the NACP around the country, I talk about my reminding of people, and I did it just recently out in Long Island, where for a brief moment I was able to say thank you. Mm -hmm. I converted the thank you into an attack on some of the people who were there, who, were, who had come to thank the NACP for what they had done. But those people were job holders mm -hmm. who'd gotten a job, and their job was to get the NACP to help them mm -hmm. on cable TV. Mm -hmm. And there they were coming to, to say to the public at large on that, at that meeting how much money they'd given to the NACP for this dinner that night. Mm -hmm. I made this comment to them and to the public, the persons present at that dinner. I am a little tired of people who get the opportunities to succeed because the NACP mm -hmm. has 
plowed the way for them. That way is bloody with the path of people who died along the way. And please remember this, each one of you who brags about the money you've given to the NACP from your company, <laughs> just remember your job was gotten not because the wind blew the apples from the apple trees of power. It was the NACP that shook the apple trees of power and brought the apples down that you are preserving. Please know this yourself and tell your children well, what the truth is. You are right on target about the role of the NAACP in making these changes, but many of the younger people feel the NAACP is not doing enough to change the system now yeah. that is affecting them with poor education, poor health care, poor housing. What is your response to that? I think the NAACP, which work, people who work for nothing, people who have regular meetings, people who are there always for you that you can go and complain because the NACP has many roles to play. Mm -hmm. It is the person you go to when somebody has uh, beaten up your child. Mm -hmm. In New York, you will go to them or, the, or, or Sharpton. You go to NACP or Sharpton. There's no large body of people like the NACP that equals the NACP. Certainly, one can complain about the NACP, but before you complain about it, you ought to join it. Mm -hmm. You ought to do something yourself within the NACP. Is so that... all the young people who complain, uh, I've been in the NACP since I was six years of age, and I'm more than six now, and anybody more than six can join the NACP and work. But let's talk about that, because I'm a member, of course, life member, and I believe in the NAACP, but many people say the NAACP really doesn't take the positions and advance the positions like they used to. What, what about that? There are many NACPs. There's a national NACP. Mm -hmm. There's a state NACP. Mm -hmm. There's a regional NACP. And there's a local NACP. Mm -hmm. It all depends upon who the constituents are in that NACP. Mm -hmm. So people can say the NACP doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. I'd ask them to identify which of the NACP they went to, mm -hmm. which of the NACP didn't do anything for them. Mm -hmm. And then I'll ask him, hey, when is the last time you delivered a circular for mm -hmm. the NACP? Mm -hmm. When is the last time you've been to an NACP meeting? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I feel so strong about this is it, it's been a life work for me. And I go all of the time, and I find myself defending the NACP. I do it with anger, because I look to the person who says that. You're saying it for argumentative purposes, to raise issue. Yeah. I shouldn't use the term argumentative for issue-raising purposes, so that I can talk to the public about it. It is wrong for people to attack individuals or organizations because they are organized to help because and, and, and attack them with the suggestion they have not done enough help mm -hmm. unless you first mm -hmm. done something yourself. Clearly that's correct, but the, some of the argument is the issues the NAACP dealt with, segregation, integration, yeah. affirmative action, they are now blurred by a number of things that are happening in the society. Yes. Yeah. And we need a new voice. We need new ideas. We do. Uh, who are the new voices? What are some of the new ideas? Well, uh, who, what are some of the new ideas? <laughs> and who are some of the new voices? I mean, <laughs> Percy Sutton is a new voice and an old voice, but basically you've been Percy around Sutton for a while. Percy Sutton is a very old <laughs> voice. Uh, uh, and I'm not one of the recognized voices anymore. Mm -hmm. Each of us has a time on earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And during this time on earth, we uh, grow old, some mm -hmm. of us. And then, well, I'm just so happy I'm here You're talking here. to you. Let's uh, talk about new voices. The new voices? 
In particular? Not in particular. The, 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 how do we get more new voices? And we then get who, more new who voices. Who some of them might be? As conditions get worse for us, mm -hmm. that's it. We get new voices, mm -hmm. and those new voices may have a manner of speaking and a style and a dress that maybe some of us don't identify with. But the new voices may have also a a, a position that does not want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. Or a position that protests every time a black person is allegedly hurt. For example, the Duke lacrosse case is one where uh, somebody supposedly was assaulted, and now people are going on national television and say it didn't really happen, and somebody is saying that that means black people are too reactive, too responsive. And well, you mean the, the, the case down in North Carolina? Yeah. The two ladies who yeah. were strip dancers. Mm -hmm. They were not That's, strip dancers. That was they, sad. They were, and sad, unfortunately. Yeah. The prosecutor, mm -hmm. uh, thinking of the next vote, mm -hmm. he was not a part of the NACP, mm -hmm. thinking of the next vote, uh, uh, alleged a number of things on the basis of what people had told him. And uh, maybe, 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 we're still not seeing the truth. Exactly. Huh? Mm -hmm. One of the young ladies is saying the other lady is not telling the truth. Yeah. But maybe that uh, this lady who's saying that, maybe, just maybe, uh, somebody has talked to her. Mm -hmm. And she sees a future without this lady. <laughs> and the best way to get ahead is to dismiss this lady. Yeah. All right, now back to New Voice. So new Voice picks that issue up. Yes. It gets a lot of attention. Yes. It gets a lot of attention to New Voice. Mm -hmm. What other kind of things would stimulate New Voices other than alleged assaults? Well, what about ideas for improving the society? Barack Obama says he has ideas. A number of people say they're not sure about his ideas. What do you think? Well, let me... Let me. I was very proud when I saw him on television representing the Democratic Party. At the convention? At the convention. Mm -hmm. Which year was that, 04? Yeah. Yeah. I've now read his book, I've heard him, and I've just seen that recently he thinks he might be running for president in 08. I'm I do not wish to be identified with those who say it's too soon. Mm -hmm. It's never too soon. Never too soon. But he would have to do a number of things to attract me to be with him. Uh, in that his voice is too soft. My point is, he believes in a society that I don't believe in. He believes that. You can negotiate things mm -hmm. that I don't believe you can negotiate. You have to fight first. Huh? You have to be strong. And you don't get strong by uh, negotiations unless you demonstrate it by Power. picket lines mm -hmm. and other things. Anyway, I, I don't get, want to give too much thought to him because every call I've gotten, as a matter of fact, one man sent me a book to read. He was so proud of it. And I read the book in the last two days. And the more I read the book, the more I have my doubts. But talk about, con you're talking about confrontational politics. Yes. Is confrontational politics still possible in an America where we have Fox News and all those conservatives? It's not only possible, but needed. Okay, well, how would we do that? How do we do it? Yeah. The best example of confrontational politics are Jesse Jackson and Sharpton. And because Jesse Jackson is older and uh, it is the person called Sharpton who gets more attention. And he is confrontational. And Jesse Jackson hadn't been cut, he hadn't been shot, he hadn't, some of the things have not happened to him that have happened to Sharpton. So the, to lead, com, lead an entity in confrontation, once you've done it, once you've been put in jail, the following says he's honest, mm -hmm. as they say about Sharpton. Now, 
Then they'll say, if you, if you veer away from that, when the next issue is on an issue that they don't see as, as strongly as that one, they say, oh, he's selling out. Mm -hmm. huh? No, they, you've got to be strong enough so that people don't say that you're selling out. But of course, that's a dream. There are going to be some of us who are on the way up, who think the best way to get up is to attack the guy who is there already. And they do it. There, there are people on the street in all. I'm so glad I live in Harlem. I'm from Texas, but I'm, I'm so glad I live in Harlem because you see it. I have two offices, one at 3 Park Avenue and one at 125th Street, 361 West 125th Street. I love that place. I love 125th Street because it, I don't care, I'm sorry. And we love Percy Sutton. Unfortunately, our time for this it's intrusion gone? into politics has gone. You're but kicking Percy, me out? Percy Sutton hasn't gone. We're not kicking you out. We're just praising you and urging everybody to come out to vote on Election Day. Thanks to Percy Ellis Sutton for being our guest on today's African-American Legends. Thank you, Percy. Thank you, sir. 